let me do that. Oh, I'm in progress now. So, so um, I will start with the welcome and, and just explain in a bit that we're going to use Zoom um, during the duration of this course. But yesterday in church, I, I, I well, we were online yesterday, but um, are we going to be online for a couple of weeks now? Uh, I hear the president said yesterday, but um, I used the story of an old African missionary. Now, this missionary told the story of an elderly woman now and he reached her with the gospel and um, <clears throat> she was an evangelist but the one catch about this lady she was blind and could neither read or write she couldn't do that but she wanted to share the gospel she wanted to share her faith with people in the streets and all over so she went to the missionary one day and she asked the missionary for a copy of the french bible now they were living in a French area. So she, she, she said, um, I want the French Bible. And when she got it, she asked the missionary to turn a page to John 3, verse 16, and mark it in red on that page. So she, and, and also mark that page so she, she could find it easily. So the missionary wanted to see what she does. And, and he followed her one day. And, and, and as it was, she, she go to the, and in the afternoon, she goes to the school and, and she made her way to the, to the front gate or front door of the school. And as the boys, as the boys' school, as they came out of the school and was dismissed for the day, she would then stop them, <coughs> excuse me, and would ask them, do you know how to read French? And all, obviously all of these boys would say yes. And she, she would ask them, um, what does it say? Because now they can see she's blind. Then she will ask, what does it say there in red? You know, and, and, and then they would, well, obviously, um, do you, and then when they read it, they, she will ask, do you know what it means? And, and then obviously she tells her um, testimony and she tells them about Christ. And the interesting part of that um, old um, missionary um, idea of this lady, um, the missionary told some people that she, she uh, through her, 25 of those boys became pastors in ministry and they're still serving the Lord today. Isn't that amazing? Just to be at the door sometimes, you know, just to be at the door sometimes of somebody's life, of somebody's <clears throat> heart and making a difference where it counts. So yes, let's pray and welcome the Lord also tonight. Father, thank you for being here with us. And as we, as we um, partake in this training opportunity, my prayer is Lord that you will bless us abundantly and Open our minds, Lord, so that we can see that there is a field outside. There is a, a rich field outside. People that's in need, people that's in, in, in desperate need. Some of them, they are crying. Some of them, they, they felt uh, the, the grief of loss during this time. And my prayer is, Lord, that you will unite us as chaplains and that you will help us so that we can go out of this room, Lord, and out of this comfort zones, which which are in so many times. And Go outside the camp. Go outside the gates of the church. Help us to do that and help us to be your light carriers, your salt carriers in the precious name of Jesus. As we, go, as we are going to go into this class tonight, help us, Lord, also to and, and make our, our um, minds fresh tonight in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to do for the following three weeks is that we're going to use Zoom. And, and you know, Zoom takes a lot of um, data, and yes, it really showed that um, a normal session like this would probably be around about um, streaming your side to, to, from me to you would probably be around about 500, 600 megabytes for, for some people that's not on a data plan or a or unkept Wi Fi. It will be difficult and sometimes, um, you know, costing a lot of money. So, um, <clears throat> so that's me. That means if you share your, your video to me, I'll, that's going to cost you. But if you can share your video, obviously, I would, uh, I would appreciate that. But if not, that's also okay. Uh, but just please stay in the class. Um, <clears throat> because when we come to the assessment at the end of this three weeks, and you write your assessment, we're not light on that because it's an open book and, 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 and you'll have to get 80% for that. But one of the, the, the rules of any class, and that is to be on time, you know, on time. And, and we need to respect time for the other students also. Um, 
because some of us we've got some apologies some of us we have some excuses to be late um we've got some church things going on but i i know that you don't have any church things going on right now especially at the at the assembly because the president stopped it yesterday night um the only way we can meet now is by zoom and and, and on these kind of platforms so <clears throat> Leaving also the classroom would, would, would mean that you would miss, miss some important information. And um, you can always go back on YouTube um, and just follow the links which we share. And then obviously on that group of WhatsApp, um, then you, you'll just grab the link there and you'll, you'll just do some catch up um, if you have to leave the room. <clears throat> we, had, we do not have a four hour class um, in this. We do not have a four hour class in our schedule right now. So. So we're not going to take longer breaks than five minutes. Um, <clears throat> so, so yes, also you can send private messages on this platform to anybody on 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 Zoom if you if you want that. Uh, <clears throat> so we're going to have a presentation every night. Um, the presentation you'll see it on Zoom, and that presentation is copyrighted. But you can make snapshots if you want, and just when I when I notify you, there's something going to be on your assessment. You can make snapshots of that, obviously. And then also um, the manual is copyright protected. You've got the manual. If you didn't get the manual, I'm really sorry about that, but we shared it on the group last night. Um, uh, the manual is copyrighted. If you if you copy it in your church or you copy it somewhere to present it to somebody, just copy it right and give um, uh, you know give honors where, where it's due. So um, yeah, I told you about the assessment, but also the certification of chaplains is also important. So um, <clears throat> what we did many years back, um, and you'll see during the, the first class we're going to present today, because we're going to speak about the different levels and scopes of chaplaincy within our division. Um, but what we had, and back in the day when Dr. Jake Pope was still the international coordinator for the chaplains, the community services chaplains, I mean, um, <clears throat> if you completed, I cannot remember, I think it's about three level ones, three level twos, mm, and one level three or something like that. It means that you have to accumulate around about roughly 200 plus hours in class. You will get a certificate like, like this from the Church of God. That was back in the day, but they stopped that, unfortunately. So I'm still busy. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've got somebody else I'm going to speak to about this so that we can also have this for our chaplains that has done uh, this course over and over. You know, some of some of you, you qualify for this already. So, um, and then inside it looks like this. Um, it's a very nice, very nice certificate. It's, it's the Pentecostal Theological Seminary. Um, let me read it for you. I cannot see it on the screen there. <clears throat> and it says here, um, Mornay, have, having completed satisfactory, the requirements for the consecration in chaplaincy ministries is awarded this leadership enrichment and development diploma and in recognition is approved for teaching this uh, diploma course. So this is what we got. And, and, and the following year, after 2013, when I got that, not 2014, I got this. Let me just check the date real quick. <clears throat> yeah, 2014, May, um, when the other students graduated, I graduated with them at um, in America. So in 2015, I also took three other pastors with me to, to let them also graduate. Um, and that is also some of our trainers. And that is Pastor Dirk Insulin, Pastor Dirk Fisser, and Pastor Peter van Seil. Two of them, Dirk Fisser and Peter van Seil, they are full-time chaplains of the Metro Police. So um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm going to speak to my own professor about this because they also present a chaplaincy course and maybe we can do a breach or something so that we can also um, you know, um, make this available for you. I, I like this uh, too much. It's, it's, it's one of my most treasured um, diplomas. Um, it's just a diploma. It's not a bachelor's or something, but it's so, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Um, and then also the other thing is, it, but it's costly. It, it costs a lot of money. This this little thing, uh, I think I we paid about just, you know, for the graduation and the cap and everything, you know, we paid about $450 or something. Was it $450 or $350? Somewhere there. It's a lot of money. <laughs> uh, I had to save off uh, for that. So yes, um, or I think I got my tax back or something. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's that's that. Um, just please be mindful of the time. Um, I'm, I'm going to be mindful of the time. When we start 7 o'clock, I'll be starting 7 o'clock, un unless the internet gives me problems on this end. And that happened before us, Pastor Mac. <laughs> Many times that happens. Um, <clears throat> but if you can be on time, we'll, we'll, we'll knock out around about 
10 to quarter, quarter to nine at the latest nine o'clock. At the latest nine o'clock, we'll be out of class. Um, <clears throat> so, so yes, um, just keep this in mind. Um, if some of you in the future, maybe, you know, we never know if the doors will open again at the Pentecostal Theological Seminary. It, it may happen uh, because um, the new people uh, appointed there, uh, I know them. So maybe they'll they'll be um, gracious to us. So um, let's move on. Um, we're gonna. Sh I'm just gonna share my screen with you, and then um, you can see what I'm seeing. <clears throat> the first day, um, and you'll see that on your schedule, <coughs> we talk about level one, day um, day one, because there is three days of training within chaplaincy level one and level two, three uh, also level three, but we do not do level three at this stage. Um, we have three days of training, and um, and we um, kind of spread it over three weeks. So to make it easy for you guys and ladies to to be part of of the chaplaincy training, so this is my screen. <clears throat> so let's move on, and we're gonna just spend a little time on the 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 scope and so on. But before we do, I, I want to share with you a small little video. You may have not seen it before. Um, some of you, you have done level one. I can see. Apostle Sean, he's done level one. Apostle Mac has done level one numerous times. And some of you, you have done level one. Um, but just but just check out this video I'm going to share with you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds like my... Sound is again giving issues. There we go. <laughs> Excuse me. and turmoil, from war to street crime, from natural disasters to political struggles. We are being faced with unbelievable challenges on every side. God is called the Church of God Chaplaincy Ministries to face these challenges, to reach out to those whom the world has left hurt and in despair, and to show them the hope only God can give. The impact of chaplaincy not measured in broad, vague statistics, but in the changes it has wrought in individuals, people with real names and real stories. Having a chaplain come since my mother's been sick for over a year now has been a great help and support to me. Just to talk to her, maybe what's bothering me is a great comfort. And uh, I think this is one of my greatest needs personally. I had just retired from a year-long deployment to Iraq where I had the opportunity to serve with Church of God chaplain by the name of Lieutenant Aaron Jones. Uh, Lieutenant Jones was very instrumental to the development of a lot of the soldiers while we were there in Iraq. And one of the things that was a blessing to the soldiers was having a spirit-filled chaplain to be there and to minister to us. And whether it was day or night, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Chaplain Jones always made himself available to the soldiers. It's great to get involved in campus ministry, so that way it kind of helps in your adjusting. The chaplains are very um, well-oriented, they know what people are going through, and it helps just to have somebody to talk to. This not only helps you spiritually and emotionally to get through pressures in college of life, but also you get a lot of great social activities and a lot of community outreaches, that you have a lot of things to do. Uh, I think it's a good thing that uh, we have different ministers that come out here to talk to different inmates. Uh, God have came into my heart uh, from uh, people telling me uh, about the Lord. In Hebrews 13, the church is told to go to him outside the camp. 
You've just heard the wonderful testimonies of our chaplains and the effect that they're having people who are in need. I'm privileged to be here with two of our some 2,700 chaplains in 69 countries. Rep okay, um, that's for the video. Uh, that was just an introductory a small little insert from the Church of God Chaplains Commission. Now, as you know, that I'm part of the Ch well, I'm from the Ch Church of God Chaplains Commission, but we have a, 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 a kind of an, um, a non disciplinary or a non churchy Chaplains Commission that's called the International Association for Community Services Chaplains, under which I we do this training. But in this commission, we've got different levels and scopes of of chaplains. We've got um, different scopes, chaplaincy certification and levels um, after the initial certification of this um, training which, which you are doing now. You can continue different levels of chaplaincy which range from community services to a chaplain, the basic one, to senior master chaplain. That's what we're going to discuss now. <clears throat> These levels of chaplaincy are based on training courses and also based on years of experience in chaplaincy and also a, obviously passing a peer board and so on and various specialized courses may be offered to you uh, like suicide prevention domestic violence as well as the disaster response levels of training are provided um, to to motivate us in a skill or a discipline and obviously in a learning acquisition where we, we we learn more to give out more because you cannot give out more when you do not learn more so all of us in our certain way, we are book people, books people, we, we read up and we feed our souls, we feed our minds to feed other people's needs out there. It's about building relationships out there. And that's what chaplaincy is about, is building relationships. Our kids are all over the world. Our kind chaplains, we're all over the world. We've got thousands of chaplains like you, you and I working in different places in marketplace in schools, in police, in the fence, on the sea, everywhere with these people, we've got chaplains. And you may be part of that wonderful experience of changing the world one by one. <clears throat> the International Association is continually striving. And when we talk about the TIACAC in this course, we refer to the International Association of Community Services Chaplains. We are striving to achieve the highest level of professionalism. The community services chaplain section is no less dedicated to providing a professional training cadre and chaplain scopes, which will truly have a dynamic impact upon the church and communities which we serve. Because all of us, we are serving in different places. We are serving in churches. We are serving the Sunday school. We are serving <clears throat> soup in soup kitchens. We are doing whatever needs to be done out there. Even if we need to rub and scrub the floor sometimes, something to do, you know. Following is some vital information which will aid the reader in understanding the requirements, qualifications, advancements, advancements levels of community services, chaplaincy, ministry also. So this is a disclaimer we want to provide. Well, note the certification of TIA is a credential of training and proficiency in a skill discipline. It is not to be understood as an ecclesiastical ministry license, such as a ordination. Any use of this credential for ecclesiastical purposes must be in compliance with the, the, the holder's own denominational provisions and authorities. In other words, if you've got a non-denominational church and you've got only an elder board and they have to um, <clears throat> acquire your educational level, obviously you can use that if you want, but for us in the denomination, um, as, as big as ours, um, this doesn't hold um, to be a pastor. So you're going to become a pastor after obtaining a course. Where is my level three? Uh, let me just get it quickly. There it is. <clears throat> so if you, get a, if you get a certificate like this um, in, in your email or something like that, then it doesn't qualify you to be a pastor. So that is one of the disclaimers I need to provide. But it's in coordinates with your own ecclesiastical um, ministry wherever you serve the Lord. If they want to accept it, that's their story. Um, <clears throat> community service chaplains and what I'll be saying uh, using uh, CSCs, just in short, obviously, during the course. If you do not know what is CSC, just raise your hand. I'll be speaking about CSCs, okay? 
and TIACSE, the International Association, we the CSE stands ready to certify those, and that's us, who stands ready to certify those who have been recommended by the local church or the pastor. If you're the pastor of the local assembly, you recommend yourself, obviously, because you are the pastor, you are the the angel of God in that congregation, according to the book of Revelations, as community service chaplains providing all required, required training and assessments have been otherwise made. Certification by TIA does not constitute official licensing. And that's what we have said. <clears throat> so all chaplains prior to certification must complete the proper application and also pass a criminal background check. So what we did is we, we did it online. And, and when as soon as you fill in the form, you give us permission so that we can actually check you out um, if we would like to do that. Um, but we also ask in the in, in the registration form, do you have a criminal background? You know, and it, we would like to know if you've got a criminal background because that's important. If you have a criminal background and you just you do not want to discuss that, just phone me or SMS me. You see, the reason why we ask that is because not we, we, we don't mind if you murdered somebody and and, and you got 25 years in jail and you came out and you want to be a chaplain. We don't care about that. We, we mind when you were involved with children. That's what we mind. Um, as, soon as, 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 as soon as it's in the field of pedophilia and you have been charged for pedophilia and you've been um, incarcerated, unfortunately, we do not allow such people to, to be chaplains because we need to protect the integrity of the chaplain's corpse, because chaplains, they need to be working with all kinds of people. We are a bridge between the church and the community. And if somebody would find out, one of our chaplains, they've been involved with children, we are in real big trouble. We cannot afford that. So therefore, we do not allow that kind of criminal background. That's the only criminal background that will really disqualify you of being a chaplain. If, you, if you're in jail, and you want to be a chaplain, you're at a good in a good place to be a chaplain. <clears throat> you also have to um, pay the necessary applicable fees. Should the state bishop, and in our case, it's our um, our governing bodies or local pastor, contact the International Association <clears throat> regarding disciplinary problem, moral or otherwise pertaining to a certified chaplain, the chaplain shall be notified in writing and be placed on a suspended list. So, yeah, we do not have those. I, I, we, you can you can report a chaplain, and obviously we stand ready to listen. But we haven't had a one disciplinary in in, and I think in about six seven years, um, nobody nobody is on the black file. <laughs> There's nobody on the black file. But there is ways you can contact our office. You can contact me, or you can contact my bosses, <clears throat> so that you can be placed on a suspended list, or the person needs to report you. Obviously, um, <clears throat> certification is taken very seriously. It is viewed as a tool. And you can see this is a toolbox. It's, it's, it's viewed as a tool for present and future chaplains involvement in the church as well as in the community. So you see, the thing is, you can focus with chaplains. You can focus a lot of your energy as a chaplain with inside of you, the confinement of the church, inside of the church. But you can also focus your energy to the to outside because the, the chaplain is the, is the best vessel to go outside. He, the chaplain is like an evangelist, like that lady, or, um, the, the story I told you in the beginning of the session. Um, the chaplain is the person that goes in, that goes out. You know, Pastor Adi Bird always, well, he, he told me always, you know, many years back when I was still a rookie and a youngster in chaplaincy, he said, you know, Mornay, <clears throat> pastors go to heaven, chaplains can go anywhere. <laughs> so that's what he told me when I was younger. Certification is therefore a valued commodity which must be sought after earned and retained through discipline ethical conduct and respect so if you need to be certified you need to understand there is a you, you need to, to to adhere and understand your toolbox you need to understand the tools you're gonna get here is the tools you're gonna use there so it's all depending on you because if you cannot use a hammer or a drill bit or whatever the case may be <clears throat> We're going to teach you how to do that. We're going to teach you in, in this three weeks how to use this toolbox to its full capacity. <clears throat> Excuse me for, for, for all of this. <clears throat> you know, there's some irritation in my throat. Certification can only be granted from a TIA certified and approved CSC instructor. No certification will be awarded unless 
unless the course is completed. You need to complete the course. You need to pass the test. Um, there's no other way for you to be, um, to, to, you know, to, to succeed in certification. And also you need to be endorsed by a local pastor. If you're not a pastor um, <coughs> and, you'll, uh, and you'll become a chaplain, you need to come under this umbrella of your, of your local assembly. If it's not the local assembly and you're not involved in the church, because we also have chaplains that's not involved in churches, they, they just, um, you know, freelancers, they, they work everywhere, and, but you need to report somewhere. You need to report somewhere. All of us, we need to report somewhere. Even Jesus, when he, when he started his earthly ministry, um, when he was about 30 years old, he, he looked around himself and he said, I need to report somewhere. And he went to John and he, he was baptized. And, and some, of, some of us, we believe that Jesus baptized himself, but he gave recognition to this prophet. You know, he, he gave recognition. And it's not that he submitted to John, but, you know, Jesus knew that all of us, we need to submit somewhere. All right. So, um <clears throat> Uh, the following qualifications are required to meet the basic standard chaplain, you know, the basic chaplain. Um, you need to have attended one level one seminar. This is this, what you're attending now. Also must be actively involved or seek involvement in a community services ministry. In other words, you must go to your pastor and ask him, listen, pastor, is there a place where you want me to be involved in? Uh, you know, is it the school? Is it the law hospital? Do you want me to to just go to the police station once a week or twice a week, or maybe to the marketplace, visit um, the pizza den, and not buy pizza, but pray with those people working there. <laughs> you can also buy pizza. Become their friend. Become become somebody that that regularly go by there and, and say, hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just here for you today. I'm not here for a pizza. I'm here for you today. Um, I want to pray with you. Is it okay with you? They will obviously say yes, because we're still predominantly in a Christian country, although Papuda and all those kind of laws want to prohibit us to preach the gospel as it's, it's supposed to be preached out of the Bible. Um, <clears throat> this chaplain, the basic chaplain, have com completed and passed the criminal background check, obviously, must work under <clears throat> the supervision of a pastor, agency liaison, or designee of such. So you can work under anybody. Um, if you are a, a, a chaplain and you, you, you're not so involved in your congregation, that's also okay. You can go to your service provider or where you work and, and tell your supervisor, listen, man, I'm a chaplain. Can I get involved with employee wellness here at the workplace? Can I do something? Can I, um, um, you know, I, I, I just passed this assessment. Here is the assessment or here's my certificate. Can I do something here at the workplace? You must serve at this level for a minimum of one year prior to promotion to the next level, unless recommended. And then we've got the advanced chaplain. <clears throat> the following qualifications needs to be met. I've completed one level one and one level two course in the past three years, past three years. So <clears throat> if you are, if, if you completed level one in 2013, obviously, and you complete level two in 2021, it's not three years. So you cannot be promoted to advanced level. It's impossible. You need to do we want level one and level two in at least a time frame of three years. Some of you have done level one and two in a month or two. I've written a three-page philosophy of community services chaplaincy and must be actively involved in a community services chaplaincy ministry. You cannot be advanced if you're not actively involved, as well as do your uh, monthly reporting or your quarterly reporting, some, some of you do. Um, <clears throat> and also I've completed and passed an updated criminal background check. <clears throat> you must, uh, the, the, the advanced chaplain must also work under the supervision of a pastor or an agency liaison. All of us, even me, even me, I'm a senior master chaplain, but I also work under the supervision of um, my, my seniors. Um, I also report to them. Uh, so yes, all of us, we report somewhere. We must meet and pass a regional chaplaincy board the advanced chaplain, and also must serve at this level for a minimum of one year prior to um, be trans transferred to the next level <clears throat> or obviously um, recommended by the regional coordinator. And then also the, we've got the master chaplain. <clears throat> the following qualification needs to be um, completed. I have attended and completed two level two and one, um, and level one, I mean, and two level two seminars or equivalent within the past three years. In other words, in three years time frame, you have to do two twice level one 
<coughs> and twice level two. And also I've selected a specific discipline of chaplaincy and I've written a five page assessment of the selected discipline. So this person, this person needs also to be a, 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 a called in front of a regional chaplaincy board for questioning. So yeah, you need to apply for that. Um, uh, but most of you will do it only later. I've completed and passed the updated criminal background check, must work under the supervision again of a bishop or a pastor or agency liaison or designee of such. And you must serve at this level for two years prior to promotion to the next. In other words, it gives you about five years if you if you go through the loopholes and stuff like that, if you want to be, um, <clears throat> you know, um, a master chaplain. Then also the senior and also senior master, obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, so the senior master chaplain, he needs to uh, he needs the requirements of everything the master chaplain did, but I've met all the requirements and also completed one level three seminar. <coughs> that certificate ju you just saw, one of my certificates is a level three seminar the Americans gave me when I was standing the level three seminar in the United States. You must have a combined chaplaincy service totaling five years prior to promotion, unless recommended, must possess a technical level amateur radio operators license. Um, we not so much, but maybe they're in um, Botswana and some other places where there's no telephones. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you need that. And also, um, if you're an American chaplain, you need an operator's license for a, for a radio. Must be proved by the chairman of the board of the International Association of Community Services Chaplain. Then, <clears throat> There's some processing times and stuff for the badges. Um, we had a blunder the other day. We we posted about, I think about 90 something cards and the post office is closed down during the lockdowns and they lost all of our cards. So, so um, you'll see that many of our chaplains that are filling in a new submission for, for graduation even as it is that um, that next Thursday evening, um, we won't have class um, because that, that's a graduation night for the previous level ones and twos. So yes, um, any questions? <clears throat> oh yes, the chaplain's board approved um, the wallets. The wallets, the wallets is gonna cost about, I think about five or 600 rands with, uh, um, with a badge inside. So um, it's a lot of money. Um, uh, yeah, but they approved it and they're going to pay it so that we can um, get those and sell it um, in the commission. So, so what I'll do is I'll just post it on the WhatsApp group as soon as it's available, <clears throat> because then the first people who gives the money will obviously get those. <clears throat> All right, and there's no questions then. <clears throat> I'm very sorry. <clears throat> Why do I need to be a chaplain? Um, I saw a, a very cute video. Um, where is that video again? Let me just check if I can if I can find it. Um, it was very nice. Uh, I just saw it earlier today. Um, let me just see if I can if I can find it. <clears throat> oh, I saw it on YouTube. There you go. Aha! Uh -huh. Here it is. Mm -mm. Ordinary people, men and women like you and your friends, that's what chaplains is. They are people, just normal human beings. It's sweet. 
it's a Catholic church. And it's their video, uh, which I just used a very, very short, interesting video just to tell you what is a chaplain. It's a normal person, a person with a heart who cares for our people. So why do we need chaplains? Why do we need chaplains, people? Um, that's a good question. Why do we need them? We need them because we, we understand that we as chaplains have to put ourselves in the position of service. That's the ultimate goal of um, evangelism, discipleship, is to put ourselves in the position of caring for other people. Chaplaincy is kind of a, an extension or an extension arm of evangelism in this world uh, which we are in. Now, here are nine dots. Um, some of you have done this exercise. Um, I, I cannot remember if I presented it in level two. Some of you have attended level two. Um, uh, but you need to connect the nine dots. <clears throat> If you don't mind, you can just write nine dots on your paper, if you have a paper there with you, or you can just figure it out how to connect nine dots with four lines. You cannot lift up your hand. You need to <coughs> place your hand on the paper and have four lines and connect its dots only with four lines. Nine dots. Can you do that? It looks simple. I've used it in a sermon before. I think I, I had nobody, even in the congregation. I, I, I had one person who, who completed successfully um, in the past, in a class, um, one or two. Not so many people would be able to connect those. It's kind of weird, but um, you've got four lines. Only four lines, you cannot lift up your hand. And all of the lines is touching one another. <clears throat> Okay, I'm, I'm running out of time now. <laughs> Let me show you how to do it. So um, if you put your nine dots on the board and you draw your first line straight through, can you see that? Straight through. You do, do not lift up your hand and you put the next one over there. You see? Over there. Don't, put up, don't lift up your hand and you put the next one over there. Till the end. Oops. <clears throat> You see? And then the next one over there. How amazing is that? Hmm? It's kind of crazy how easy it is. Um, unfortunately, sometimes we, we, we find everything difficult and we, we also always seek for, you know, to, to unravel things in a difficult way. And, and this is so common and easy. Easy as that. Can you see that? Doop, 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 doop. Finish and clap. So, um, <clears throat> what it is about is the church, um, and, and this is what I want you to see in this, is that you need to think outside of the box, because many of you, many of us, we have been thinking inside of this box for many, many ages, many, many years. <clears throat> We've been guilty of thinking inside of the box, because the church has taught us this way, through its doctrines, through its beliefs, so that we cannot reach those outside through just thinking inside of the box, and that's what the church's biggest problem were in the past because we've been gated inside of this church. We've been gated inside of the church and we feel safe there. I like the church. It's, it's a safe place. It's a safe place of worship. We feel we don't need anything here, but we need something. <clears throat> and that is to uproot wickedness in the world. And how can we do it in the confinement inside of the block, inside of the box? We need to get outside of the box, outside of the box. We need to <clears throat> uproot wickedness in this world. We see so much wickedness. We see critical race theory. We see Papuda. We see all of this nonsense happening in our time. And we need to uproot this wickedness in this world as chaplains and bring love of Christ to people once again. We need to bring love outside. Yes, it's nice to love inside. And it's easy to love inside. But it's difficult to love people out there who doesn't love you at all. For people... Uh, you know, these people are outside. They don't want to feel outside. They don't want to feel excluded. They want to feel included in this body of believers. <clears throat> but they, you know, many of, many of us, we feel even excluded in our own congregations. As church, we've secluded ourselves and excluded those outside. We've included only ourselves. We've secluded ourselves, you know, behind the doors of this church building <clears throat> and we excluded those outside. I've heard many churches have said, 
if if there is a drunk, you cannot get into the sanctuary because it's a holy place. This is not a holy place. The people in there is holy. The body of believers is holy. But this is a building with built of bricks and stone. That's not nothing holy about that. Um, <clears throat> chaplaincy ministry and outreach is about to care for people out there. We need to care for them. With what, with what we've got, we need to care for them. We All of us, we've got different sets of, of skills, you know, skill set. Um, we've got different toolboxes. We can care for people. Some some other um, <clears throat> chaplain of us, he, he wrote in, in the manual, you can find it also in the manual, he said he wanted to do something for people, you know, and he bought a set of jumper cables, you know, to, to, to jumpstart your vehicle, and he put it in his boot <clears throat> so that when somebody needs assistance on the road, he can be of help. So he wanted to care in that way. And what happened was he was um, driving the whole day and he was tired coming to his hotel and somebody <clears throat> knocked on his door at the hotel or motel. I, I don't remember if it's a hotel or motel and said, you know, sir, my battery just died. Can you help me? And, and he said to him, he said to the gentleman, listen, man, I'm so tired, man. I'm, I cannot help, but he felt bad. And he remembered that he's got this jumper cables in his vehicle's bootlet. He said, let me come and help you. And, and that's the thing, to find opportunities, how to help people. This is just a silly thing, but it's one opportunity how you can help people next to the road. Um, um, <clears throat> pick up strangers sometimes, you know, to, to witness that to them and, and care for them and pray with them if they've got some hardships they're facing. Maybe sometimes, you know, these days we do, we do not pick up anybody because Corona has stopped that. Um, you never know who you're picking up. Um, if, if this person's got COVID-19 or COVID-20 or COVID-21, I don't know. Um, but we need to find opportunities how to care. What I do is, and I, I love this, is that um, <clears throat> I make hot chocolate for, 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 for people, you know, and, or coffee. Uh, this is one of my ways to care for people in the community. And also we've got a soup kitchen here at the church. Um, we care for people here, um, and, and we do the caring ministry, and, and, and about, um, I've got a list over here, we've got more or less between 48, 49, 57, 85 people every day coming through our soup kitchen, and that is ways we have, we have found to care for people in our community. You can find other ways, I mean, you can even, um, you know, as I said, just pass by the pizza place and say, guys, you want a cup of coffee? I'm going to the Wimpy. Um, I want to bless you guys today. And they will ask you, what's this about, man? Then you'll just tell them, I care for you because Jesus cares for me. That, that moment, they'll realize, wow, what an amazing person. You are really a caregiver. And this is, <clears throat> you know, also about service. It's about servicing the community. I, I can, you can think about a lot of things to do and to sh service the community. And um, <laughs> with your caring and with your love, you can service the community. Do not be a policeman for the community and try to be a, 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 a policeman standing on the road and showing fingers for everybody that's driving too fast or whatever the case may be. Now, that's not service, but love people in your community and also sacrifice. It's about sacrifice. Chaplaincy is about care, service and sacrifice. That's what chaplaincy is about. These are all Christ-like attributes. This is the things that Jesus lived out when he was still on earth. And even he instructed us to live out these kind of qualities, the Christ-like attributes. He wants us to care for people. He wants us to service people in the communities. He wants us only not, he doesn't want us only to serve people in the church. He wants us to serve people out there, you know, making a difference out there. And also sacrificing yourself, sacrificing your time, sacrificing your money. This is not what you want to hear, but chaplaincy is going to cost you. It's going to cost you money. Let me tell you, the registration fee for this course is nothing in correlation with what you're going to pay outside there to bless people and to care for people. It's not putting your money out there. It's using that which God has given you, you know, and just making a difference out there. Even buying a chocolate. You know, sometimes they will ask the chaplain <clears throat> to open up in prayer and scripture in a school meeting, or they will ask you to open up in a, in a prayer meeting um, at the police station. It doesn't cost you much just to buy a chomp and give it to everybody around there and preach about chomp. You know, there's a significant, you know, um, meaning uh, when you can, you can, you can Google it, you'll see it there. 
it's got a nice uh, a sermon outlay, the word chomp, but this there's are so many ways to, to sacrifice. There's so many ways to care for people out there. So when we say care, we talk about caregiving. It's what you give. It's not, it's not about what you get. Many people say, you know, you need to give to get. It's not about that. We as chaplains, we understand that <clears throat> it's a one-way um, road. You know, we, we, we just give. We just give. Because God will ultimately come around and bless us also. But let me tell you this, God will open doors where you, where you thought no doors were before. Some years back, I, I love to, to use this as an example. Um, <clears throat> just around the corner of the church I served in Pretoria back in the day, there was a filling station, a Caltex garage. And I went to the owner of the garage and I told him about my, my presence there in the community. I'm new here and I want to make a difference in the community. I'm also a chaplain and I want to do community service as chaplains amongst his people here at the Caltex garage and you know um, and he, he saw me you know for a couple of months coming in coming out um, you know pumping fuel and so on in his filling station and and, and, and he said to me listen um, chaplain pastor I thank you thank you very much for being there for my people I really appreciate it I want to be there for you also and and, and I cannot remember which year it was but he gave me for two years until I left there he gave me, I think, about 500 or it was 500 in the beginning. And then later on, 1,000 rands of petrol every month. That was a lot of petrol. So I didn't need that. But some other people also needed that fuel. So I'll just, you know, some of my members that really struggled, I'll just call them and say, hey, I've got some um, petrol there at the station. Just meet me there. I want to bless you. I want to give it to you today. So, so, yeah, obviously, you'll find ways to care for people, understanding people in a way that reflects concern for their pain and suffering. Because we've got many people out there in desperate pain, you know. It is more practical than theoretical. <clears throat> you know, it's more walking than talking. And many people like the talking, but never like the walking. It, chaplaincy is more wa walking than talking. It's, it's like you putting your hands, you know, even in a time of COVID, you, you, you just fist bump them or something like that but you, you'll be there for them you know because chaplaincy is more practical than theoretical and also it is spiritual in that it helps people in their search for the meaning of their life rather than searching for a religious or a church experience because people out there and in there are tired of church experiences they do not want to feel the church experience anymore because they want to feel loved they want to feel somebody is caring for me somebody really likes me in the air. So, so that's what people want to feel. Because chaplaincy is about care, it often requires that we get dirty. For example, when a, 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 a wife phones you, hey chaplain, um, my hobby is again in that bar over there. <clears throat> Sometimes you need to get in there and get him out. Just go and get him. Don't let him waste out his life in there. Just go and get him. <clears throat> and it's also a fulfilling ministry. You'll see on your way, in this ministry, that it's a real fulfilling ministry. It's like, a, a, it's like the heartbeat of the church out there. You know, the church's heartbeat doesn't, doesn't pound inside of the church only. It also needs to get out there. Uh, the passion for the lost out there. Uh, chaplains generally have lots of energy and are focused on the mission of the church, obviously, and the community. The church, on, unfortunately, many of times, they're only focused on the church members. They're only focused on the people inside of the church, inside of this environment. And it's a nice environment because that's the body of Christ. But it doesn't need, to, you know, why did Jesus call the church actually? He called the church to be the church out there. He didn't call the church only to be the church in here. We are only supposed to equip one another inside of this body of believers and then go outside. That is reaching the community for Jesus Christ. That's what we do as chaplains. Chaplains touch lives of a wide variety of people. We do not just touch lives here and there and there. We touch the lives of doctors and, and medical practitioners. We touch the lives of inmates and, and army people. We touch the lives of a wide variety of people. Chaplaincy ministry is filled with variables. In other words, it's a changeable environment which decreases potential burnout. And also, obviously, stress overloads for you as a chaplain. Therefore, you as a chaplain needs to look at yourself and, you know, and, and, and be at peace with yourself. And sometimes just take a break, you know. Just take a break and, 
and, and just go and rest for a while so that your brain can just switch off for a bit. Professional training opportunities are available. Continue, continually available, <clears throat> which enhance service and ministry to, 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 to let you, know, you know, know your toolbox a little bit better, you know, how to use every tool in that toolbox. That's what this opportunities is all about. Always useful for practical application in the church. You can use what we give in the church and it will make a difference. I can assure you, if you're a pastor and you take this training inside of your congregation, it will make a massive impact in your environment. This is a discipleship course, actually, but um, <clears throat> it's a chaplaincy course. You know what I mean? Chaplaincy ministry and community services provides potential for full-time ministry also. In other words, when you, when you have completed all of your training and you walk around with this kind of certificates, you know, if you apply for a chaplain's position and you have a theological, theological degree also, it puts you in another level with a normal theolog the theologian, you know, um, <clears throat> because then the, the chaplain's division will say, oh, but this person was involved in chaplaincy, but this one, he was just involved in the congregation. So, so yeah, you, you, can, you can do the math about that. Because of personal commitment, service and sacrifice for community service chaplains, the world is introduced to a caring church. We build a bridge between the church as well as the <coughs> community. Chaplains build a greater trust in the church and clergy outside. That's what we do. We, we, we're not appointed for that. We are not mandated for that. But this is what happens when we care for people, when we share for pe with people, and when we sacrifice with people. This is what happens. The world is also introduced to a caring clergy and leadership, as well as confidence in a chaplain then relates to confidence in a pastor. So if they have confidence in you as a chaplain, obviously, well, they will have confidence in your pastor. If you're the pastor, they will have, you know, confidence in you. As the world observes your selfless service, they better understand the mission of the church. That's how it works out there. They will understand the mission is about them. The mission is not about us, people. It's not about you and me. The mission is about them. Go ye, was the command. We need to go. And we need to go out there, you know, immediately. So this is a short little insert, a video. I want to show you quickly. And the, it's, what's the church? What is the church? Is the church a building? Is the church a pastor? Or the staff? Is the church the music? The tradition? Or the ministries? These are all good things, but they are not the church. Take them away, and the church is still here. Why? Because you are still here. The church is you. The church is you with a purpose. The church is you on a mission. The church is you with a plan, a simple plan to plug into God at a weekend service, to charge up in a small group community, to live out using your gifts and passions, and to pass on your faith to those who do not know Christ. When you and I live like this, all the things we used to do in the <coughs> church become things we do as the church. God desires it. The world needs it. And we are called to be it. What is the church? The church is you. Can you see that? Chaplain, the church is you. <laughs> yeah, you can Google this video. You can find it on YouTube. Um, what is the church? It's amazing. It's amazing to know that the church is in the building. The church is in a music team. The church is in the elder board. The church is you on a mission. That's what the church is about. It's you out there. It's not you in here. You cannot make a bigger difference in here than you can make out there. 
this that's where the chaplain plays a very important role is there any questions to end of this session not this session for tonight we still have a class unfortunately <laughs> many of you would like to go to bed i see okay there be no any questions let's take five let's take five you go and make yourself some coffee you come back in five minutes it's okay all righty then we take five minutes Hmm. That's weird. All right, five minutes. Let's go. Let's go. Nou ja, mensen, dit was nou lekker geweest om gewoon vijf minuten lekker stressen te vat. Ek is hierdie stoel vir my, is net so lekker gemakkelijk. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. The Lord remains faithful, eh? Ok, um, we're going to discuss orientation and ministry philosophy. I only have about 10 to 15 minutes for this. We're going to run through it, ok? We're just going to do low flying because I want to get to a, a closing section tonight and that is history of chaplaincy, and that's the more important part, but not for your assessment sake, but for your knowledge sake. Okay, so if you can find this on page six, um, I believe, yeah. So the course normally is a three-day format, and you'll see on your schedule that we've marked it day one, session one, day one, session two, day one, session three, is to make up for the 27 hours of instructions that you'll be having during the during this course. Um, normally it's three hours, or uh, three days, nine hours but in this kind of way we we spread it over three weeks because it will i think it will hurt and pain you to sit in front of a computer for nine hours a day um yeah i will i will probably you'll you'll you'll, you'll have to come and do some debriefing on me after this training if, if that be the case <clears throat> and then also uh focus uh, the focus is prepare pastors and laity for chaplaincy this is what the focus of this course is. Now, the, the orientation, um, what we're going to discuss now is only uh, for your insight. It's not for your assessment, but uh, it's kind of important stuff so that you will just make a mental note. Pastors, lady and students may attend. This training is for everybody. We even had teenagers attend this training before. Um, I mean, like children, like 14, 15 years old. Um, <clears throat> We can, uh, it's a basic course for chaplaincy, certificate awarded, and then also certification is available. So it's not to say we're going to certify you as a chaplain, but it's available if you, if, if you there's going to be a form which you're going to request that certification after this training. <clears throat> so the manual, and this is the layout for the manual, you've got a content page, the orientation, the att attitudes and the core courses. Um, <clears throat> specialized ministries and endorsements, resources, subsect sections and page numbers. This is not so important, but it's just so, so that you can know your manual and also class guidelines, because um, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss your manual during the class time, but you'll have to go and read your manual also and, and make some, you know, notes on your manual. Um, these days we use online manuals and, and I use my tablet. My manual is also on my tablet and I just mock with yellow what's important what's not important i leave it um the goal is maintaining course integrity that's why we need to have you know some guidelines uh we need course integrity we need to have time in class if there's no time in class how uh, how are we supposed to, to maintain our integrity the credibility <clears throat> through sound instruction and course management therefore i i take a a um this this registration for well, registration form i mark everybody that is on this 
and who's um, attending the training because many people that is registered for this training haven't attended tonight so obviously they um they missed the the the, the, the introductory part of this training <clears throat> and also it, it it kind of we're not maintaining our course integrity and then some other guidelines materials are copyright protected as as you know what i said earlier if you copy copyright um visual aids <clears throat> may not be sold or given away in other words but you see here on this board um i cannot just give it away and you cannot buy it also from me it's, it's not for sale for sale um but if you if you if the money is good i will i will speak to my superiors <laughs> visual aids may not be sold Certifi certified uh, primary trainers teach and manage this course um, so we've got some other certified trainers also i may just ask one or two of them to take some lead in training next week uh, you never know <clears throat> then we also have class guidelines again attendance required sending daily so in, in in a normal training session for three days you've got an in and an out sign so in the morning you sign in and in the afternoon you sign out so so that's what we call the signing daily final comprehensive exam will be done uh, these days we do it on google forms um was well, mac have taught me a lot of things about google forms <laughs> so we do that on um, google forms and then also certificate of completion for students who pass and are present at the time <clears throat> at the graduation obviously our mission statement as csc is committed to enriching the lives of people we serve uh, by providing emotional and spiritual guidance this is what we do we provide spiritual and emotional guidance to people if they're sick if they're healthy um, if they um, have a new addition of uh, addition to the family CSCs are people who are dedicated to the instruction institution or agency wherein they are called as CSC is trained in areas of counseling human behavior pastoral care or other related areas so so you know what's your speciality you know what's in your toolbox we're going to just sh sharpen some of your instruments in the toolbox so that you can use it better outside okay now <clears throat> there is a, a comparison the philosophy makes um the chaplaincy ministry philosophy makes um between the church the traditional church i mean and the chaplaincy ah, I try to think of a, a, about our congregation not as a traditional church, but unfortunately, we are still stuck in traditions in many ways. And I'm not talking about only the assembly; I'm talking about the church itself. Um, <clears throat> tradition holds us back, you know, draws us back, uh, pulls us back very hard. So, so that as soon as you walk outside and, and minister outside, you become detached from the church body. Um, you become like a uh like a you know a danger for the other pastors you know if you are moving outside the, the camp but the traditional church is a do kind of church they just want you to do this then you can be a member you see um <coughs> excuse me but the chaplaincy on the chaplaincy side is we instruct them not to do something but to be something be the church that's what we do we instruct them to be the church and we train them how to be the church. That's what church is about. It's not about do something to be the church. It's to be the church, actually. As you know, uh, we've got so many traditions. Um, if you're not baptized, for example, you cannot be a member of the congregation. It's actually weird, but because how could you be a member of a body and you're not baptized or whatever the case may be is, but you just go and be the church. The Lord will bring the water as the Ethiopian as and, and, and Philip the Lord will provide the water and he will provide the opportunity to baptize that person then in the traditional church the pastor church the body <clears throat> but in the community we pastor the community so inside is only the body that is pastor but outside is the community that's pastor this is a good sermon for you guys ministry inside of the building in the traditional church but in the chaplaincy side ministry in the community that's what we need to do and then also we've got ministry um, <clears throat> um to christians and then outside ministry to unbelievers inside of the church the traditional church we've got we we need to save the lost but outside care and service in other words the holy spirit will save the lost yeah, you know, so that that's the problem with and, and the difference between all, uh, you know, the church and the chaplaincy and, and we are the bridge between the 
the world out there and the chaplaincy inside of the church there are many christians and this is the environment we are having inside of the church <coughs> we've got people that serve the lord people that are christians but outside we've got unbelievers people who doesn't believe some of them they don't believe in anything um, then we've got inside of the church it's a safe place it's, it's a safe place to be it's a nice place to be it's nice to praise and worship you know um, many years back um, we we always sang about the Lord. You remember, but these days we are singing for the Lord. It, 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 it's, it's a nice place to worship the Lord together, uh, and it's a safe place for your for, for your spiritual life. But outside, for the chaplain, it's very risky. It's very risky out there <clears throat> because it's a dangerous minefield. Inside of the church, there's friendly folks, there's friendly people meeting you at the door, and afterwards they just want to drink coffee with you and. They give you some biscuits uh, and stuff like that. But outside, oh my goodness, you've got some unfriendly people. People going through some tough times, not putting up a mask. You know, outside, they don't put up masks. It's just inside of the church they put up masks. It's like <clears throat> somebody once said, fake it and you'll make it. That's the problem with inside of the church. When we, we've got many fakers in the church, many people coming to church friendly, but actually inside of themselves, they're unfri unfriendly. They're not friendly at all. If you meet them on the street, you will never know it's a church person. Eh? You got me? Because inside of the church, they want to feel friendly. One want to, therefore, we put up a mask. And then unfriendly outside of the church. The people out there are very unfriendly. <clears throat> Some of them, when you want to support them, they will just reject you instantly. Then inside of the church, it's a familiar area. It's a familiar um, um place you know it's, it's you know everything uh, there's the toilets there is the the tea room there is the church building <clears throat> it's familiar people you know all of these people but outside it's it's a dangerous place and inside of the church is a self-focused kind of environment self-focus people are only focusing on themselves not on anybody else and then in a in a community <clears throat> it's other focus they do not focus on the self only but they focus on the other and inside of the church, we've got the fact that, um, you know, it costs little to be part of the church. You just bring your 20 rands on Sunday, everybody will love you. But, but when, you, when you are moving outside of the church, people, it's going to cost you a lot. It's, an, it's more than 20 rands, believe me so. It's more than the 20 rands they bring to the offering basket. Um, uh, and that's the thing. It costs a lot to be a chaplain. If you're not willing to pay the price, I mean, then obviously chaplaincy is not for you. If you're not willing to you know, to cause pain or even be pain by people, chaplaincy is not for you. If you're not able to be hurt, in other words, you know, sometimes people will tackle you. Sometimes people want to kill you um, because you are caring for others and they don't like it out there. They don't like you um, caring for people out there. So yes, just go on and care for them. Any questions? <clears throat> I guess we can just push on. You'll just raise a hand. There's a little hand you can raise when, um, whenever you need to um, ask a question. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Page 10. Christians being the church in the communities. That's the history of chaplaincy. We, we're just going to discuss the history, where chaplaincy comes from, you know. Because no, nobody can find the, the word chaplain in the Bible. Um, but there's a biblical history of chaplaincy. And, and I'm going to show you now. In the Old Testament, how it works. Chaplaincy is ministry that takes place outside of sanctified holy places. Now, there was three holy places <clears throat> in the Old Testament. And that the first one, obviously, is the tabernacle, the portable tabernacle. Um, <clears throat> even in the times of Joshua, when they, when they put up the tabernacle in Shiloh, in, um, close to Samaria, um, for a thousand years, the tabernacle was over there, so that was a holy designated holy place. And even today, if you go there, you can sense the spirit of God moving over that lands in Shiloh. And then we've got the second designated holy place when the first temple was built, as as well as the second, and 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 that was a designated holy place. There are three designated holy places in the Old Testament, and the third one is the synagogue. Even when Jesus was moving on the earth, and even today, there's a lot of synagogues, Jewish synagogues, all over the world, but. <clears throat> These were the three holy places, designated holy places in the Old Testament. <clears throat> in the early history of the church, or not of the church, of the Old Testament, the, you know, there was lasting ordinances of blowing of the trumpets in, in battle, in Numbers 
10 verse 8 to 9. You can read that over there. So these people, you know, blowing the trumpets in battle, they were they were probably chaplains. They were probably people willing to move forward and and to do something, you know. <laughs> and even when the priests were crossing the Jordan River in Joshua 3, verse 14 to 17, <clears throat> as soon as the priest has put their feet in the Jordan River, the Jordan River just dried up in front of them. The same happened at the walls of Jericho. When the walls of Jericho collapsed in Joshua 6, um, you know, there was a priest walking in front, you know, and blowing the trumpets and praising the Lord and every day for once every day and on the seventh day, seven times. As, as, and, and then the walls collapsed. There was people worshiping, um, you know, in front of the, uh, the legions and the armies of the Israeli people. We also have prophets in the Old Testament. So we have priests, we have prophets, and these were kind of, you know, chaplains. They were chaplains, kind of persons. Um, Elijah is probably the greatest name in the Old Testament, but he was called the stressful prophet. You'll get this in your test, obviously, and because we will probably ask something like, <clears throat> yes, or, 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 yes or no, false or true, um, Elijah was a stressful prophet. Then you'll say yes, because he was a stressful prophet, like many pastors are. The name of his of this great prophet from uh, Tisbe in Gilead is well known in the history of Israel, a well-known person. <clears throat> you can read about him in 1 Kings 8, 18. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> he lived in the wilderness and showed up to condemn the worship of Baal and of Ashereth. And the work of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel is speaking. He spoke against it, and it's like the chaplains. We are going out there speaking against presidents, speaking against people out there, because we see the, the immorality that's going on in our country. He also dealt a death blow here in um, 1 Kings 18. From verse 16 to 19, verse 18, he dealt a death blow to 500 prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. 500 prophets of Baal were killed on that day. And as recorded, you can see it in, in, in 1 Kings 18. Elijah <clears throat> also lived in the wilderness. He lived in the wilderness and he returned home, if you can call it home, to pronounce God's judgment on the corrupted leaders of Israel. His ministry may be considered a prototype of chaplaincy ministry. And we can see it all through his ministry that Elijah was a prototype of chaplaincy ministry outside of the designated holy places. Remember now, as soon as a priest and a prophet and a person, a Christian like us, we move outside of the designated holy places, then obviously we are moving out as chaplains. All right. So now, <clears throat> what happened here was there was a death blow. Elijah chopped up a lot of Baal prophets on that day. So this was the traumatic event. Can you see it? I want you to imagine Elijah, maybe he had some help, I don't know, but <clears throat> according to many theologians, he was alone, but he may have had some, some of the um, uh, prophets which he hid from Jezebel, because she killed all of the prophets, and, and, and Elijah may have hired some of the younger prophets with him, and, and they caught these Baal prophets, because I mean, come on, these Baal prophets wouldn't come and stand in a line, all 500 of them, and say to Elijah, it's my turn to die for my God. No, no, that won't happen. They will scatter. They will run. <laughs> that will be a horrific day. So Elijah had to go and catch them and chop them up. And, 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 and it was a bloody thing. You know, blood was all over, all, all over his clothes. So he was very close to this event, very close to this event. So close that even whilst he was chopping up one guy, maybe <coughs> this guy's daughter was watching. Because remember now what Elijah did. He called all of the prophets of Baal, and he called all of their families probably also, and he called everybody of Israel, if they could come, if they didn't have something on that day, they would have come to Mount Carmel to see what would be happening on Mount Carmel, because they were invited, so many people were there, so 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 those people who did, would have also maybe, um, you know, got their hands, you know, full of blood of the Baal prophets, so yes, and, and one of these prophets, maybe, whilst Elijah was busy with him, he, this man's daughter would probably may have just come to Uncle Elijah and just touched him and say, Hey, Uncle Elijah, please leave my daddy alone. 
please don't cut him. Please don't chop him up, you know. Uh, so he was very close to this event. Um, it, it may have caused a lot of trauma in Elijah. And I think he did because <clears throat> he had some symptoms. He had withdrawal symptoms because <laughs> after that, he, he just withdrew and he went into the wilderness. And he spent a lot of days there, I think 40 days. So, so what was his perception? Remember now, for chaplaincy, perception is reality. You'll see this during the course of time in this training, that perception becomes reality. And his perception was, well, he was strong enough <clears throat> and able enough to kill 500 plus people on the day. But now he was frightened about the SMS he got from Jezebel. And she said, listen, Uncle Elijah, I'm on my way with my cavalry and I'm going to chop you up as you did with my Baal prophets. Oh, come on, please, Jezebel. The God of Israel would have helped Elijah. You know, obviously, because <clears throat> Elijah uh, was just afraid of this woman, but not only of this woman, but also of her soldiers, because she had a, a number of soldiers marching with her when she goes to places, when she goes for shopping in, in, in pick and pay, she had probably this zillion people coming with her to protect her and to protect her life. <clears throat> so, yes, um, this also about Obadja. <clears throat> So Abijah prophesied against Edom, and he declared that Edom would be punished and defeated as God's judgment for their agonism against Israel. You know, um, and also Jonah. Jonah was a good, uh, well, well, a good example of a <coughs> chaplain. Because sometimes some of you would feel, oh my goodness, chaplains isn't for me. Like Jonah did, did feel that he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Uh, he prophesied against the Syrian city of Nineveh. Um, he spent three days in the belly of a great big fish and lived to tell about it. It's like this little Sunday school. Um, well, what happened in the Sunday school class is the, the teacher, she told the kids that it was impossible for a big fish to swallow this big man. Because even if it was a whale, the world cannot swallow big things like a human being inside of its stomach. It's impossible. And this little girl said, hey, mom, I, mean, I just want to tell you, it, it, the Bible says it happened like this, and it's like that. And, and they got, you know, a little bit angry with one another. They, you know, they, 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 they had to quarrel about that. And <clears throat> then the kid just said, well, I'm going to ask him if he, if, when I go to heaven someday, how did it work out for him in the belly of the fish? Then the teacher said, but what if he doesn't go to heaven? And then the kid said, then you'll ask him. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So he was sent to a pagan power, actually an enemy of Israel, to enter the city itself and proclaim the impending judgment of God against it. And <clears throat> as soon as he did that, the whole city came to God. So these references serve as examples of ministry outside of the Jewish worship space. And that's amazing because, you know, even Jesus, you know, he was a person who went outside of the Jewish worship space to get those people outside, like the Samaritan woman and, and many other people uh, we see in the Bible. So in the life of Jesus, we see Jesus minister along the seashore. And, and, and for me personally, Jesus is the, is just the most powerful example of community services chaplain <clears throat> because of his love for the community because his main ministry wasn't in the three designated holy places of the old testament you know the temple or the tabernacle the temple and the synagogue it was out there jesus was born into the jewish community uh, to two devout jewish parents you can find that in the bible his parents Mary, Mary and joseph Yet Jesus' ministry, time after time, occurs in areas outside of Jewish worship space also. He was the perfect example of a prototype of disciple or of um, community service chaplain. Jesus cared for people. He cared for them. He serviced them. And he sacrificed himself for them. Now, <clears throat> you can see that he ministered on the seashore. Jesus calls his first disciples over there. And as well as among the people, Jesus was always amongst the people. He was always having people close to him. Um, maybe um, uh, if you didn't see the, the new 
app or the new um, Jesus movies, and it's called The Chosen. You could you can go and Google it, uh, The Chosen. Um, absolutely fantastic. They've got two seasons. Um, I've watched both seasons, and I think on season two now, they are busy shooting um, uh, 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 number seven. Um, I think number seven of episode seven. Yeah, I think it's episode seven or six. Um, absolutely fantastic. It's an app you load on your phone. I've got it on my phone. I can. You can also go and watch it on on on, on your um, internet or on your um, PC. But it's a normal app. You can download it from the Google Play Store or the iStore, and then you just press in there the chosen. <clears throat> and as soon as you download this app, you can watch these movies for free. You can donate to to the chosen makers, movie makers. Um, you can do that. <clears throat> but it's a fantastic tool for people to let uh, to to get to know Jesus's ministry. And, and, and it's very it's very powerful. <clears throat> Jesus also ministered on hillsides. In Matthew 5, verse 11, on the Sermons on the Mount, you can go and read the Sermons on the Mount, 5.1, um, um, if I mean. And also along city streets, Matthew 8, Jesus heals the Roman centurion's servant. And then he also healed, you know, he was also ministering in a house where he healed the mother of Peter. Yeah, that movie, which I spoke about, The Chosen, also, <laughs> it's quite good when he heals uh, Peter's mo mother-in-law. Um, <clears throat> because obviously, when he, he healed her, she went back into the kitchen to prepare some food. Number one. <laughs> In a boat, Jesus also ministered. Jesus calms the storm. Fantastic chaplain. Fantastic. Perfect prototype of being a chaplain. Where there's problems, Jesus was... Just Jesus was there to calm the problem, to calm the storm. Um, if, if, if it not be a <coughs> physical storm out there, it may be a raging storm inside of a human being where Jesus just brought some peace. Also in the holy places, Jesus ministered in holy places. Um, <coughs> Jesus went into a synagogue in his own town of, of Nazareth where he got into a, uh, a, some trouble, you know, and also the temple cleansing as discussed in Mark 11. So yeah, Jesus ministered also in holy places. The Lord took his message to the people. That very important message he took to the people. He performed miracles, taught them spiritual principles, and also confronted the religious leaders' hypocrisy. He was concerned to be a radical um, by Jewish religious leaders, obviously. <clears throat> then we've got the Apostle Paul, <clears throat> ministry, he was a missionary theologian to the, to the nations. You can read about him in the book of Acts 14, um, all over the Bible. In the New Testament, you'll find the Apostle Paul. Remember, the book of Acts was never concluded. The book of Acts is still open. We are still writing the pages of the book of Acts. Still today, whilst we are evangelizing, whilst we are preaching the gospel, <clears throat> the book of Acts is still being written by many people out there. Paul's ministry in the local synagogues, city streets, and in believers' homes. Other apostles and disciples worldwide making a difference unto the Lord. <clears throat> then we have the early church history also, like a man called St. Martin of Tours. You can find him in your manual. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> no, he, um, on a cold, shivering night, Martin, um, St. Martin, well, he wasn't saint at that stage. Um, the Catholic Church later pronounced him saint, but at that stage, he was just Martin of Tours. He was a Roman soldier, and on a cold, shivering night, he, he, um, he saw a beggar. And, he, and, and the beggar didn't have a jacket on, so he was very cold, and he was freezing, you know. So, so, so Martin, he just tore this jacket because the Roman soldiers had, had, had this great um, attire, you know, to, to wear. Um, <clears throat> and he tore his jacket apart, his cloak, and he gave the one half for this beggar to put him to, to, to close him up, to, 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 to clothe him a little bit, and he took the other part for himself. <clears throat> Just around the corner, the Bible says, one well, of the Bible, the history says that that this man, the beggar, approached him and he said, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it for me. And he gave back the cloak or the, um, the, the cloak to, to St. Martin of Tours. Now, um, <clears throat> this is part of the church history and the early church history. 
from where the first time um, the word chaplain or capellanus um, was used because um, that cloak which St. Martin of Tours got back from the beggar, which he believed was Jesus Christ, that, that, that cloak was called the capellanus or the keepers of the cloak. And today he's called chaplains. So that's amazing. Now, the, the reason why, <clears throat> then later on, obviously, you can read about St. Martin of Tours on your own time, but what, what happened later on, St. Martin of Tours didn't want to fight in the Roman legions anymore um, because um, he, he was now a Christian, devoted Christian, so he withdrew from the, the army and he got arrested. He was in jail. He was incarcerated because of his non-compliance to the Roman standards and whatever the case may be. And then he said, listen, I'm, I won't pick up a sword but I will pick up the cloak. I'll be the keeper of the cloak. And what I'll do is I'll put it on a pole and I'll walk in front of the legions of the Romans and I'll pray for the soldiers. You know, I'll pray for their souls. So yes, St. Martin of Tours, one of the first. There's some other histories, but this is not so interesting because this is an outdated slide. But I just have to just tell you how long you know, ago, um, 1978 was the chaplain's commission established, the chaplain commission of the Church of God. At that stage, there was 11 military chaplains and two prison chaplains. But today, there's thousands and thousands, much more than the number reflecting here. <clears throat> the military chaplain, there was no military chaplain in the world, Second World War. In 1945, General Assembly minutes changed to allow for chaplains also to be included. In, inside of um, the church, um, you know, circles. Institutional chaplaincy serves the incarcerated, sick, in medical agencies like hospitals, hospice, nursing homes, and etc. And also, <clears throat> another extension of the chaplain's commission then came the the CSC, which we call the Community Services Chaplain. We are an extension of the full-time chaplains, and this is inspired. The CSC is inspired by Hebrews 13, verse 12 to 13. You'll get this in your assessment, and I'll speak about that also a little bit later during the week. Um, <clears throat> the two pillars of chaplaincy. The first pillar of chaplaincy is the Samaritan mentality, and the second pillar is this one, Hebrews 13, verse 12 to 13. And so Jesus also suffered outside the gates to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. So yes. When you answer Samaritan mentality, one, and second one is Hebrews 13, 12 to 13. You do not have to write down the, out the old verse. Then I'll know you'll understand what's the two pillars of community services chaplains. Can you see how important it is to spend time in the class? Because sometimes people will miss that. You won't believe how many people missed um, this question in our pre previous level one. We had 49 learners <clears throat> and about 25 of them missed this question. <laughs> Um, on the best accounts of the ministry of love in the Church of God is written by Army veterans, Chaplain Richard Burson in the history of Chaplains Church of God. Um, there's some other books also. Um, I can I can give it to you um, the names. Let me just go to my Kindle real quick as as it opens. I just want to share with you those books also because it's um, it's powerful books to read. <clears throat> about chaplaincy ministry it costs you a little bit you remember what i said chaplaincy will cost you um where's my kindle now oh come on man. oh there it is chaplaincy will cost you and, and that's the thing about chaplaincy um even even if it costs it's it's okay because you know um <clears throat> this information is, is like expanding and, and broadening your scope as well as helping your um your your, your toolbox so <coughs> excuse me I'm sorry, the internet is a little bit slow. Where's my Kindle now? Come on. Ah, um, oh, come on. Wait. Let me just go to my Kindle on my phone. This internet is very slow on this thing. All right, so we've got... Um, where is the first one? I read a couple of books this year. Um, hmm, Healing the Scars of Childhood Abuse. You can use that one. Uh, <clears throat> Ministry of Presence, Biblical Insight. Um, 
also a very good book. And then you've got this Ministry of Prisons. That's called Ministry of Prisons. You can find it on Google, on um, 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 Kindle. And then we've got, um, ach, I, I will just share it during the week with you on, on the group, the work of the chaplain, the work of the chaplain. I cannot read, it's a small there, I, uh, I cannot, outside the gates of the church. We, we discuss in our course, we do the outside of the gates of the church. Um, so yeah, and, um, yeah, that is just a few, a few chaplaincy books. You can, you can find it on, on Kindle. Uh, I'll just share it later with you um, as time permits on the group. Um, okay, then we've got, we're almost at the close for tonight. <clears throat> the Easter of Chaplaincy, Church of God Chaplaincy Ministries today continues to be written by hundreds and now thousands of men and women like you who are being trained for the ministry of care and service to others beyond the gates of the local church. Since the lockdowns, we have the opportunity to train people online. <clears throat> I must just get the correct figures quickly. It's about 124, 128, somewhere there. Um, chaplains, we have trained. Um, no, it was more. Um, it was just for the three trainings, it was 124. Then we had another two trainings. So it's about 170 plus <clears throat> chaplains we have trained during this um, lockdowns. So yes, if, there any, if there's any questions, you can ask it quick, quickly and then you can see how the rest of the evening goes. Any questions? Oh, you're a very quiet group. Hi, Pastor Mane. Hey, man. Fine, go for it. Uh, go for it, yeah. Um, just wanted to confirm the two pillars of uh, chaplaincy. Yes, man. Yes, it's the first chaplain. The, the first uh, pillar is the Samaritan mentality. We'll be discussing that tomorrow, I think, or the day, the day after, I think Thursday. Samaritan mentality. And Hebrews 13, going outside the camp or going out to the gates. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right. Um, the only of chaplaincy, I believe, is not for tonight's schedule. So, yeah, I'll, I'll leave you with, with that then. Um, so, um, uh, I hope you had a good, night, good time and um, I hope I'll see you tomorrow. Um, do you have your schedule with you? I didn't print my schedule. I just want to be sure that I do not miss something um, <clears throat> for tonight so that the work will be too much tomorrow. There we go. Oh, there's my schedule. Oh, yes. We concluded with history of chaplaincy. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, if you're a first-time student, thank you for being here. And maybe the Lord bless you. Um, keep up the good work of ministry out there outside of the camp outside of the designated holy places. Have a good night. Thank you, Pastor Mac. Love you, man.